The World is Not Enough was Pierce Brosnan's third James Bond film coming after Tomorrow Never Dies, and this film tells the story of a woman who finds herself entangled in a nuclear plot while James Bond tries to protect her from her former kidnapper, an international terrorist who can't feel pain. I actually had no plans to review The World is Not Enough. I played the game a lot as a kid. I saw the movie quite often when I was a kid. My friends and I, we all kind of had the VHS. It was just one of those VHSs you had. Like, you had Independence Day, Men in Black, possibly Godzilla, and maybe Goldeneye, and Tomorrow Never Dies, and World Is Not Enough. It was just one of those VHSs that everybody kind of had. But I've been in a James Bond mood, and I saw that it was on Netflix, and so I sat down to watch it just for fun. And I decided I wanted to talk about it. This is a film that is strangely polarizing for James Bond fans. There are many people that don't like Twine, as it is affectionately referred to in the fan community. Uh, some people find it very boring and repetitive. It doesn't really have the energy of Goldeneye, and it has at least one horrifically bad performance that we'll talk about later. But there are others that appreciate this film because it feels a little bit more like classical Bond. This movie feels kind of like a Connery picture in some ways. It doesn't feel as modern as Tomorrow Never Dies was, especially since Tomorrow Never Dies was like, let's have a tech mogul because everybody was afraid of technology leading to the year 2000, which is strange because this movie came out in 99, so you think they would hit it over the head even more in this movie. There's one mention of the Y2K bug in the film, but for the most part, this feels like an old school Bond movie. For some people, they were done with that. They didn't want that. Goldeneye reinvented it, and the fact that World is Not Enough kind of took it back to a, a nuclear plot, and there's a, a guy who can't feel pain because he has a bullet lodged in his brain. But the film also has a lot of supporters because Pierce Brosnan's portrayal of Bond in this movie is a lot darker. He's also written darker. He's meaner in this movie. He's not quite as quippy as he was in Tomorrow Never Dies, and certainly not as he was in Die Another Day. But Brosnan's portrayal of Bond is definitely darker in this film, and we're gonna get into some spoilers here, so if you've never seen the movie, that's your warning. Our main villain is this guy who can't feel pain, but there's sort of like a sub-villain that eventually appears from the character of Electra King. She is suffering from Stockholm Syndrome. She has fallen in love with her kidnapper. For a lot of the movie, you don't know that. And when that's revealed, it's actually kind of gross. You're like, ugh, that's, that's disgusting. That's a very vile storyline. The fact that this woman was kidnapped, was forced into using her body in ways she did not want to, and eventually came around to falling for her kidnapper. That's really fucked up. The film doesn't really get a lot of credit for its darker themes. And directly after she tries to torture and kill Bond by using a machine that's slowly choking him, he kills her right in front of M. You wouldn't kill me. You'd miss me. Yes. Die, Bond! I never miss. So despite some of the one-liners and despite some of the more humorous scenes that are in The World Is Not Enough, they were attempting to go back to basics. The script is not as good as it could be. The villain is acceptable. The action sequences are also acceptable. They're nowhere near as good as Goldeneye. There's some serious staging issues in the final confrontation between Bond and this guy who can't feel pain. Both actors are drenched in water, more than likely the set was too, and there's bars everywhere. This was probably a nightmare to set up and shoot, and you can tell while you watch it. They can barely get around this set to make a convincing looking fight. It's really awful, but the storyline is rooted in more suspense and tension than Tomorrow Never Dies was. There's action sequences galore in this movie, and while some of them aren't that great, like the skiing sequence, which is okay at best due to some poor setups again, this could be second unit directing issues, I'm not entirely sure, but there's a lot of action sequences in the movie that could have been great with a steadier hand behind the camera. But I found myself mostly interested in this film because of that storyline, the idea that this woman was kidnapped and eventually fell for her kidnapper, and this betrayal that Bond feels as a result. It's not like betrayals in Bond movies are new or anything, they're very common. But the movie also gives a lot of screen time to M, and any screen time given to Judy Dench is a good thing. She is taken captive in the movie, and you get to see her trying to use her resourcefulness to get out of that captivity, and there are things they did with the characters in this movie that I surprisingly like. Rewatching the film made me want to review it. 
I was literally just going to watch the movie and have it on like in the background. And I kind of got invested. I haven't seen the movie in a long time. And I was surprised that I enjoyed the movie as much as I did. Because the film is by no means a favorite. In fact, most people don't like this movie. And I can understand that. But a couple years ago, when I got that box set behind me, I rewatched all of the Bond films in a row. From Dr. No all the way to, I believe, Quantum of Solace was the newest one at that time. Because it was right before Skyfall came out. And I got to watch the progression of the series. And it was the, the best way for me to experience the Bond series. Just watching how all of them changed. How some of them went back. How some of them tried to go forward. And how some of them were just absurd. In the case of The World Is Not Enough, you can tell that there is definitely an attempt to go back to basics. It's just that the script wasn't as good as it could have been. Let's talk about what is easily the thing that everybody can agree on, whether or not you like this movie or not. The casting of Denise Richards as a nuclear physicist. Okay, you guys know that I get a little uncomfortable trashing actors in film. In this case, though, I can't deal with it. She is horrific in the film. This is some of the worst acting I've ever seen in a big budget movie. It's absolutely embarrassing. There are scenes where she's supposed to feel like she's about to die and her face is like a fucking stone wall. Nothing is moving here. It, it is just pure bland. It is a horrifically bad performance and, and the casting choice seems entirely based on the fact that she is a beautiful woman. Easily one of the worst casting choices I have ever seen. Her dialogue and her delivery is all horrendous. The fact that she's in this movie really, really affects it poorly. But Brosnan does his best here. I think he's pretty good in this movie. I liked seeing Robbie Coltrane back after having him in Goldeneye. There are things about this movie that I definitely appreciate. I think the villain's a lot stronger than the fucking guy who's going to control the media. Or ugh. And I appreciated that Bond does some really cold-blooded shit in this movie. He doesn't feel like he's having a good time. He, he seems kind of pissed for a lot of the film, and I appreciated that. But it also suffers from some late 90s effects. There's a sequence where they're going through an oil tunnel on this fucking thing. <laughs> I don't even know what it is. The green screen is pretty rough. And as I said, there's some staging of the action sequences that could have been improved significantly. I wasn't there, obviously. But it feels to me like relying on the second unit to just get it done. That's how it feels to me. And I think that was a poor choice. Still... I actually think The World Is Not Enough is kind of an underrated Bond movie. I'm gonna give the film a B minus. So I've got one more Bond review coming for you guys in a couple days. Which one could it be? Well, I'll give you a hint. It's License to Kill. Uh, <laughs> guys, thank you so much as always for watching. Look forward to more reviews very soon. And if you like this, you can click right here and get stuckmanized.